question from Buria also. It's regarding Iceland. Oh, okay. Okay, what is happening in Iceland? Why do you think we are not informed? Um, because here in Spain and on the media, and particularly on the alternative media, we are trying to find some reasons. And we don't know if it's because it's outside the euro. Uh, is there any, do you think there is some kind of protection from the politics? Um, uh, here in Budio, we have in contact the Iceland embassy here in Madrid to, to do a Budio chat, just like you. And the ambassador told us that he has been informed through the media. That he has been what? Informed. He's informing himself from the media, the media. that he's not having any information about what's going on in Iceland. So um, we are receiving eventually from time to time several um, news about uh, bank people going to jail, a new constitution, um, the new government or the people opening to Facebook and Twitter and social media the constitution. But we don't have any Spanish journalists there, we don't have any European journalists there. We try to contact some politics there and no one is answering. So the question is, what do you think, personally, as an Iceland person? Okay. And uh, we think that what is happening in Iceland is revolutionary, actually. And who is afraid of Iceland and why they are afraid of Iceland? Eh, la pregunta es eh, del equipo de, de Budeo, eh, es sobre el, el país de Christine, eh, Islandia. Eh, ¿Cómo es que eh, no sabemos nada o casi nada de, eh, de lo que está pasando ahora? Eh, hemos eh, intentado con, comunicar con eh, la embajada islandesa en, eh, en Madrid y eh, nos han dicho que ellos mismos se informan, se informan eh, a través de los, eh, de los medios, eh, que lo, lo cual nos parece eh, muy sorprendente porque en, eh, en realidad en los medios hay, eh, hay muy poco. Eh, escuchamos información que eh, se está escribiendo una nueva constitución, que hay políticos y banqueros que se van a, a la cárcel, eh, pero mm, seguimos sin tener eh, periodistas o periódicos, presencia de periódicos eh, españoles allá y nos preguntamos mm, cuál es la razón de eh, tanto desinterés con lo que está pasando en Islandia. ¿Alguien tiene eh, miedo a, a lo que está pasando ahí? Well, you just uh, pointed out towards a, uh, a good reason to save taxpayers' money by closing down the embassy in Madrid. But uh, it is quite hard to, to fathom what is happening in Iceland. Uh, and the interest in Iceland uh, is usually uh, very little by the mainstream media uh, from abroad, unless there is a, a volcano spewing ass in the air yeah. and disrupting air traffic. And also, we have a problem in Iceland as well, because after the economic crisis uh, hit Iceland in 2008, there had been uh, uh, almost 25-30% uh, of all journalists had been sacked. Mm -hmm. The ones that are remaining are working under uh, ridiculous conditions. Uh, they're working for the private media, who is still owned by the people who were causing the banking crisis. They are working for... Uh, 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 under an editor who was a former central bank governor and former prime minister. Mm -hmm. So even the, the, the local media in Iceland is in a very difficult uh, uh, position actually to, to cover the stories in Iceland, let alone trying to uh, help out foreign journalists or or, uh, or getting the story out what is happening there. Mm -hmm. So I understand that it's a very mixed message and it's still the dust hasn't settled after the, the big economic collapse and it was a, a tremendous shock to the system. If you just imagine the numbers that the turnover of the Icelandic banks were 10 times the, the gross domestic product of Iceland. So it is. Uh, it was a, a. It's a lot of job cleaning up after that. It's it's, it's very slow. Uh, the culprits and the bankers have still not been brought to uh, uh, trial. Mm -hmm. uh, 
because economic crimes takes a long time to investigate. Uh, the prime minister has now been put in front of uh, 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 the former prime minister in uh, front of a court uh, for his uh, 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 political uh, wrongdoings uh, that led to the crisis. So. As I said, the dust hasn't settled. It's very hard to, to see through towards the, the, the core of things, and people are fatigued and tired. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is extraordinary, uh, in my opinion, as an Icelander, for the, the second time in the history of the Republic, you had a political uprising. And I can, uh, I can assure you that I, I was there in the center of Reykjavik in the uh, early weeks of, of uh, 2009, mm -hmm. that uh, people were this closed from uh, burning buildings and cars and wow. basically ousting, uh, and because it was a total anarchy. And we're not talking about trained or, 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 or young people who were uh, uh, very heated about the, 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 uh, the, uh, the collapse of the system. We are talking about ordinary people who were working in offices uh, middle class people. I was just getting interested. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Did you ever heard of that, Michele? Uh, I, I saw something in the documentary. Mm -hmm. uh, what did it show in uh, So I've never, I've never seen such an anger among uh, a broad spectrum of people. Everybody was so angry because they felt so betrayed, mm -hmm. they had been lied to, the, they had been the big lie that everybody was supporting, uh, the authorities, the bankers, the uh, institutions that were supposed to uh, keep uh, uh, an eye on the, the business environment, uh, the president, even a lot of the media played along in the big lie that we had a sound and beautiful economic prosperity. But it was all based on lies. It was a house of cards and it came tumbling down with such force that it was like a, 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 an economic uh, earthquake of a great magnitude. So people went to the street and what they were mostly uh, disgusted about was not the fact that they lost money, that the uh, currency lost 50% uh, of its value, that their savings were lost, but what they really were angry about was that they had been lied to for a long time. And that anger led to such events in the end of January 2009 that I believe we were about three or four days from the burning down of the House of Parliament, the burning of cars. It was, a, it was a, I've never felt a, a thick environment like that anywhere. And I've traveled around the world. I've seen protests in many places. Uh, fortunately, the, the government decided to step down. They felt the, the, the depth of the anger. Mm -hmm. uh, a new government was, was voted in, a, a purely left-wing government for the first time in the history of the Republic. Uh, they've only had uh, two years to try to sort out the problems. It's a very short time. People are very impatient. Mm -hmm. and, uh, about Spain. Something yep. the same the thing about betraying, about lies. This, this, this has happened all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the most disturbing thing is that there hasn't been a, a reliable reaction to this. We still, we still see the, the, the fundamentals of the economy still uh, being the same. The, the bankers are still protected. They are still getting their bonuses. They are still getting uh, uh, on the track of, of profiteering on the basis of greed. Uh, and there's no accountability. Mm -hmm. So where is this all leading to? People. If we look at this in a big perspective, and I've, you know, I started journalism just after the fall of the Berlin Wall, when we saw the end of uh, the experiment with, uh, with Marxist uh, economic theories. Uh, it didn't work. And everybody said, well, this is the, uh, the proof that the, the capitalist world is, uh, is better. And the pendulum swung mm -hmm. towards greed which has been predominant uh, in our society in the West since then. And now we see the collapse of, of, of all those ideals, the, the, the untamed... Uh, 
Uh, ok, uh, Islandia. I forgot you actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, voy a resumir un poco porque uh, ha sido una respuesta bastante larga. Uh, bueno, Islandia uh, es un país uh, pequeño, es un país uh, que normalmente no entra, uh, no, uh, no crea, uh, no hace mucha noticia, uh, a no ser que sea por uh, causa de, uh, de volcán. Um, eh, lo, que pasa, eh, lo que pasó y eh, lo que está pasando en Islandia eh, ahora es bastante difícil de, eh, de entender del todo, de asir del todo. Um, en eh, 2009 eh, empezaron a haber protestas eh, que eh, fueron, estuvieron a, a punto de eh, eh, llevar a consecuencias extremas. Eh, creemos que... Eh, en unos días más eh, la, la gente podría haber llegado a quemar eh, coches y hasta el, eh, el edificio del parlamento. Por suerte el, el gobierno eh, decidió eh, dejar, eh, dejar su puesto y eh, entró un gobierno por primera vez en la historia de la república, un gobierno solo de, eh, de izquierdas que ahora sigue en, en su trabajo. En todo caso eh, el trabajo no, eh, no está acabado en, en Islandia. La gente eh, que eh, empezó a protestar en 2009 eh, se indignó no tanto o no solamente por el dinero que había perdido en, en los bancos con la devaluación eh, y, y con eh, la pérdida. Eh, la, la gente espera que, eh, que todo cambie rápidamente y esto no es posible justamente por la complejidad de, eh, del sistema que se, eh, que se había creado. Mm, solo hace falta pensar que el volumen de negocio uh, de, los, uh, de los bancos en Islandia ha llegado a ser 10 veces más uh, que el Producto Interno Bruto del país. Uh, también hay que considerar que la situación del periodismo en Islandia no es nada fácil. Uh, la crisis ha, ha, ha dejado entre 25 y 30% de los uh, periodistas en la calle y los que siguen trabajando, siguen trabajando en condiciones muy difíciles, uh, siguen trabajando por uh, medios uh, todavía controlados por, uh, por poderes muy interconectados entre uh, la finanza y la política y la, la economía. Uh, hay editores que son eh, parte de la propiedad de, de bancos o eh, que están eh, en, el, en el gobierno. Con lo cual, eh, con lo cual la, eh, la situación allí eh, no eh, está lejos de, eh, de estar de ser resueltas.